60 year old man with a history of significant pain abdomen for last one month or so. He has lost more than 15 kg during this period. Imaging shows a pancreatic body mass. Uh, so the aim is to do an endoscopic ultrasound, evaluate this pancreatic mass from close quarters. So I am inserting the linear EUS scope inside. Do you have the endoscopy image there, uh, Nitin? And the endosono also? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So let me switch to the endosono image. So I am seeing the posterior part of the patient and we see a mass. You can see this is a large mass in the posterior part of the pancreas. I will use an arrow to point it out. So this is all the mass which is going deeper down. It looks neoplastic. So this is, this is the mass which we will be FNAing and instead of rows we will use Viva scope and ask Dr. Anuradha and Dr. Babak to tell us what the likely histology is going to be. So I am using a 22 gauge core needle to get the tissue which will then be subjected to the post acquisition analysis using Viva scope. Mohan, you would like to add anything? Mohan is with me, who is an expert EUS guy himself. He has several talents and so while I set the needle right. Yeah, so here we are having uh, another technology which can be competitive to rose technique with uh, much more uh, accuracy, advantage. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the image quality that you saw in the previous quiz, yeah. uh, let's uh, hope and uh, that we get the similar type of and that will be a game changer on its own I think. Once this becomes a standard of care, the quality of image, the way it is transmitted uh, uh, through the uh, media, it can be transmitted live uh, remotely to within the same hospital even externally yes. elsewhere as well. So we need not to have a pathologist in the room, they can keep on working in their lab yes. and we can send the image while we are working. So that uh, the logistics will much will be much better. That's right. Yeah. Currently, they have to come to the endoscopy room with the microscope and all the paraphernalia. Okay, so that's yes. the needle inside. Very nice. Can we remove the stylet, please, and can take one quick image? So, Anuradha, can we see the cytology as well as biopsy both together? We have to do the routine uh, rapid HE, sir. Parallelly, we can process the tissue. So, I think we can actually do a comparative study also between the conventional and this new method. So, three to four uh, actuations I will take in different directions uh, with the needle. So, is, this is not the rose for cytology, but it will be like a whole biopsy. So, it's way. like architecture along with the cells, both things we will be seeing. Yeah. And uh, let's see what we get. I have not taken uh, the tissue, I should be a pure white cores which may be there. So, you did and not apply suction? I did not apply suction. Yeah. It was a, just a stylet removal, the slow pull through technique. And uh, maybe the cameraman can shift to the stage. Yeah, okay, that's what we are seeing. So, he is keeping the tray ready. And uh, the tissue is now going to come from, oh yeah. Can we have a, so it's a pancreatic body mass which is also invading almost to the splenic hilum. We are seeing a lot of collaterals. The adrenal gland is enlarged. There is trace ascites and that is the cause for his pain. So, they are using a, a forceps to expel the tissue out and this is gently being expert. So, all the tissue has now gone there and once this is analyzed, the same tissue can then be put in a formalin bottle and sent to for grossing and cross and sectioning by the, so the tissue does not get damaged. So that's the beauty of this, you're not uh, destroying anything. It also tells us that you've got adequate amount of material and uh, which that pathologist can subsequently interpret. I think it's very quick also. Yeah. It's not, it's not like so, uh, taking a lot of time. So just Even few drops, drops of this acridine dye. That's uh -huh. right. Yeah. So, Anuradha says this is like a modified pap stain. So, you can in the clinic, in the room itself. So, basically the stains which we are Micro using is going to stain the nuclei cells yeah. and the background um, uh, cytomatrix, that's the stromal cells, just like how we do the hematoxin and um, eosin, this is the same thing. 
This is a little bit, uh, we call this microhistology. It's between cell uh, cytology and I histology never... because you have microstructure of the tissue preserved in the matrix. And of course, you will get a, a chani like image in two, three minutes. And later on, you can do immunohistochemistry, pass, whatever staining you want. And of course, molecular analysis, if you want to do PCR, next generation sequencing, it's possible to do. So, so it's like a three-dimensional uh, sheet analysis where you go through the different layers of the tissue. And uh, the advantage of this is we are able to see the relation of the cells with the um, stroma as well. Okay. Okay, no, I'm washing. So you're washing with saline. So after you're putting dye and then a few minutes later you wash with yes. saline. Yes. And then the whole thing is put on a slide, glass slide which has magnets on the sides so that the... So this was a pancreatic body mass. Pancreatic body mass. Likely, I don't know, carcinoma, like a malignancy, we could make it out. That's a provisional diagnosis. The CA99 was very high in this patient. And the two magnets will actually give compression. So the main uh, problem when we are analyzing the routine FNA slides is sometimes we don't see the deeper stromal tissue to evaluate for stromal invasion. So many a times at um, time of FNA analysis, uh, the pathologist might uh, give one step short of malignancy if you're not able to see stromal invasion. So FNBS, that's why taken over um, FNAs. And now okay. with this three-dimensional thing, let's see. Yeah. I have a question. So with this machine now, do you think the role of pathologist will go down? That is, uh, it looks so clear to interpret. Maybe me, Sandeep and Mohan can look at it and say this is malignancy or not malignancy. <laughs> so that, uh, not that your job is in danger, but can that happen? <laughs> or uh, is it possible to transmit this to your mobile phone? So wherever you are, because pathologists can become very busy nowadays. So many specimens coming in. So wherever you are, you can see on your mobile phone and get back with a report. So these are the two things probably you should discuss also. Yeah. So one thing is... Um, uh, you need an expert uh, cytopathologist or for that matter an expert endoscopist who is able to interpret the finer nuclear details because sometimes when there is inflammation and you have sheets of cells showing slight atypia, you can mistake it uh, for malignancy. So you need to know the characteristic uh, cytological details which can uh, differentiate. So I think uh, we still need an um, uh, experienced pathologist to make the difference and come to a diagnosis. Now obviously we can't replace you. Yeah, but then uh, <laughs> if you st uh, talk about the advantage, yes, like how we are doing rows by endoscopist and rows by technician, this definitely will help the endoscopist to get a provisional idea on the amount of material and also a baseline about the diagnosis also. Also, I, I think one of the advantages of this technique that I see is that even if you rows, if you do rows, you do a lot of uh, um, uh, sectioning and you require a technician to do all that. The technique here seems to be very simple that you just have to stain it in a simple way. So it doesn't require a very experienced uh, person to do that. A regular endoscopy technician can be trained to stain this and put it under the microscope. Yeah, so wherever you are in the, in the building, you can actually see it. I think they've got the images on now, maybe. Yes. You want to. Yeah. So, so I select the area and I start the scanning now. So we selected the area of interest and that's the computer does that. And it scans that from so top to bottom in a going in a circular while fashion. While the images are being scanned and it's stitching the whole image, I want to answer the second question which uh, Dr. Reddy had asked. That uh, yes, if these images are uh, provided to a pathologist on their mobile and while they are st in their uh, rooms r doing their routine work, they can definitely give an opinion. And so you can uh, speed up the process and do both diagnostic and therapeutic interventions wherever required. So I think there are advantages of this as well. So now as you're seeing here, this was the tissue and uh, you can see the cores of tissues as it is building up. You have some cores of very cellular tissue here. So once the entire uh, slide is mapped, we'll go on to the, those uh, areas. Uh, yeah. It's like a grass mower moving in a big field and the area, the, the cricket pitch is now being selected, the area where the real action happens. So, and because of the, the, another advantage here is you can see the entire tissue which you have got. Yeah. So, at the scanner view, you know which are the areas of uh, interest and where exactly you need to go so, in and uh, So, in, see. from that image, you think that the 
left lower quadrant is the area of interest which has the core tissue in that so like for example yeah, here are the, the cores yeah. of tissues so we will we'll focus go, there we'll so you we'll take the target to those, um, there areas okay. so you can see this was a nice uh, core of uh, tissue and also if you see here first see these are the you can see the benign monolayer sheets and then as you see here you can see that the sheets are all disordered that means they are no longer in the honeycomb sheets and here you can see that there are some amount of uh, anisonucleosis and discoesive cells and now if we go on to this main core so you can see the cytomorphological details So I'll just go to some more areas. So what is the diagnosis on first look? So once uh, in pancreatic uh, tissues, the most important thing we look for is cellularity. Once okay. there is increased cellularity, I know I'm dealing with some neoplastic lesion because if it is, if we talk about the benign conditions like chronic pancreatitis, there is more of desmoplastic tissue rather than cellularity. So next question is cellularity, is it benign, is it um, neoplastic? So if you see here, you can see that there is some uh, vague gland pattern and there is anisonucleosis. So These are big cells. Okay. Yeah, you can see the big cells and here there is an asinar pattern of arrangement. Yeah. You can see here the gland like uh, pattern. Yeah. So the next question could be why are they are not benign ductal cells? Yes, you can have some benign ductal cells as well. And this is the stroma. See the spindly nature? Yeah. So this is a stromal tissue which you are having here. And then with the history that you have a mass lesion and now if you go to this area, ah, look at this. There is total cells. loss of gland pattern and there are sheets of cells and you can even make out the anisonucleosis. So I am just going to zoom in. Yeah, you can see there is overlapping and look at this cell. So it is almost three times the size of this cell. So that is one indicator of also one to know more. the degree of anisonucleosis. And second, we said the advantage okay. of FNB is to look for stromal invasion. Now this is all stroma. So you have these glands going right across the stroma. So not, this not gives confidence to us to label it as a malignancy and by the morphology of this, it is an adenocarcinoma. Next. So. Yeah, okay. so in FN, in, in FNAs, we, we tell as positive when I am searching for discoesive cells and bare nuclei. But sometimes when the cellularity is limited, uh, we will have to uh, then balance between the cellularity and the cellular features of that limited cluster. But if I have a tissue like this, I am more confident to give it off because it is like a routine histology and you can see the stromal tissue here. So the stromal invasion is definitive of uh, a neoplastic etiology and the clustering and loss of polarity of the cells. So we can see the entire tissue here. So it's so a good core with good uh, yeah, architecture good and you have seen the cells. Yes. So yeah. will your final uh, histopathology, will it differ from this one or uh, do you think you can finish it here itself what and give a clear cut answer. If I have stromal invasion like this, I don't think I will differ from this. Okay. But if it's a very well differentiated adenocarcinoma, which is the main uh, mistake which the uh, pathologist can make, then we have to look at the foamy gland pattern and the other cytological details, okay. which um, at most of the times on cytologies, we tend to ask to uh, give time to look at the uh, tissue. But now that I'm having the tissue, I think 90% uh, we are confident so, that. So it's not only it. cytology but also the biopsy part that you can be confidently yes. comment here. Yes. I am told that the next level thing in this uh, Viva scope is IHC also they can do by special staining. That will be really game changer. Even so, yeah, if that personalized is there, medicine can, kind of thing can come up then. Because in pancreas, IMP3, maspin are said to be the standard markers which are going to be positive and SMAT4 will be negative. So even if I have one positive marker and I am able to apply this here, I think it's going to be a game changer. What about the histology? I mean, what additional histology in conventional way versus this? What is your choice? Why? I mean, you understood what? Conventional is I would like to take serial sections and but look for the stroma. So the advantage is yes, we are able to take serial can sections. You, serial sections yeah. so you can go up and down. Uh, yeah, yeah, that may be a good idea. How to move superficially to deeper part in the so, same area of interest? So very easy by scrolling the mouse in the center. We can go up, oh, yes. so we are going and from this top is to bottom. 
Yes. And then I'm doing a ZS tag. Yes, uh, just like we do in CT scan, we go from anterior to posterior in a Cine video. We can do also uh, right from to left this us. region, uh, mosaic uh, ZS tag. So oh, you can have different mosaics also yeah, involved. So not only the uh, snapshot mosaic um, ZS tags, but also the mosaics. I do five layer, every layer three micrometer, ah. and I start. So it's a start of scanning now. So basically, he's taking serial sections like how we do routinely. Okay, so fine. the advantage of this is you're, he's taking serial sections here without even cutting the tissue. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that means the idea of pathologist taking a serial section is when we go to the deeper level, sometimes the invasion is more evident. So that uh, advantage is what he's going to show us here. So for the audience sake, this cutting is done by the laser itself. It's moving at 3 micrometers per, per thickness exactly. and, and giving exactly. the, the depth of invasion from top to bottom. Exactly, we call it optical section. Optical section, wonderful. So suppose in one section there was no stromal invasion and you go down or change the level, you will see the stromal invasion. Yes. yes. It's like a 3D so thing. Because when the tissue is embedded, you will have to go to the deeper levels to expose those areas of, uh, yes. of infiltration. So that can be done in, uh, without, electronically now. Yes. No electronically, yeah. Electronically. Yeah, I think we should. Uh, yeah, thank you very Babak. much. I think uh, we should end this session now. We'd like to thank Dr. Babak for being with us and also helping us with this technology. I think uh, this is a fascinating technology. As we uh, uh, drop off from AAG, We'll just show you our endoscopy room started with what we thought was a very new ne technology. We had a microscope, Another a brain. very high-end microscope, which Dr. Anuradha could access from any part of uh, the hospital. We used to stain those slides, cut them, put them in, then she used to take. And this was very recent. In fact, most hospitals in the world do not have this. We thought we have achieved the maximum. But now comes this vivo section, <laughs> which is vivo scope is much higher than this. I think this is certainly the future technology, the new uh, area where endoscopies, endoscopies will explode with the pathologist and you certainly saw here these two cases both were indefinite diagnosis when they came in for endoscopy. We had just five minutes and in five minutes both the cases the problem was solved with these fantastic pictures. I think this scope has got a little more advantages than the standard uh, pathology because of the ability to give cut sections immediately at the endoscopy room itself. So we saw very clearly the pancreatic cancer which biopsies Dr. Sandeep took and of course we also know it is invasive cancer. We see very clearly, that I, I think we have never seen this type of histopathology so clearly even in our standard microscopy and this I think is a major advantage and I am sure this uh, vivo scope is going to be used all over the world although it is a little expensive but I think it is worth investing because this is something that is going to change the way how endoscopies are going to deal with pathologists in the endoscopy room. I think you all agree with me. Yes, I think we will also learn a little bit of pathology by seeing the screen yeah. with the pathologist. So we next already to learned us. so much pathology <laughs> just in this <laughs> 10 minutes. Huh? So I'd like to thank Dr. Babak. And rather, thank, thank you very you. much thank for you. this. And thank you. Mohan, as you sign off from AIG, thank you very much for watching this YouTube session.